Galatians chapter 5, turn your Bibles there. Uh, I've got a couple things I want to say this morning. Um, there's a, a, an older couple that, they, they haven't been here in a while, but they, they had been coming here for a couple years. It's Chris Dodson's grandma and grandpa, uh, Charles and Betty Forsyth. And uh, back, I can't remember, January, February, somewhere around in there, sometime in the wintertime, uh, they had to put uh, Charles in a nursing home, and um, Betty called me and wanted me to come up and visit with him, and so I did, and uh, I asked Charles, I said, Charles, do you know if you die today where you'd go? So we, we talked about salvation, and I prayed with him and gave him scripture, and, and uh, I believe there, uh, if, if not already uh, he was saved, I believe there uh, in the nursing home he did, he did make that assurance that he knew Jesus to be his Savior. Well, he passed away the other day, and uh, I think it was Tuesday, Tuesday night, I got a call from Sister Betty saying they'd just lost him. And uh, so anyway, I will be doing that funeral Tuesday, uh, going out to funeral home. It's at Cutest Funeral Home uh, up in South County. Be there Monday night. I think from like 6 to 9 will be visitation. And then the funeral will be Tuesday at 10. And so I'll be preaching that funeral, so I'd, I'd ask you to pray uh, because <clears throat> there's, a, there's a man that's really, really on my heart and um, that's in that family. And I love him dearly. And uh, right now he's having a tough time. He's, he's dealing with some issues personally, dealing with some issues and I don't want to say a whole lot. I don't want to hurt him in case he's listening. But I love him very much. And I'm praying for him. And I'm praying that God will use this situation to really have a, a good, positive impact in his life. And so y'all pray for me that uh, God will give me the wisdom. God will give me the words uh, to say. God will give me the message to preach. Because I like... If I know somebody is in heaven, I like to preach the gospel. I like to give the gospel in a way that will reach people during that time. Heaven, somebody going to heaven is a time of joy. It is still the sting of death. It still hurts us. But we, we know then where that person is. And the saddest thing that I think I ever have to do is preach a funeral to someone that I'm just not sure that they're in heaven. I don't preach them into heaven just to make people feel good. But what I do is I offer the people that are there, I give them the gospel in such a way as that they know that when they die, they can have eternal life. And so just be praying for me and praying for uh, Sister Betty and, uh, and all of her family uh, as they go through this loss. He was a good guy. He really was. I really liked Charlie. And uh, he loved this church. He loved the preaching here. And uh, so I'm just, I'm thankful that I have that knowledge, that confirmation that I know where he is. Uh, and then you're in, where did I tell you? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Uh, I'm preaching through this, and I, I don't want to stop doing this. You've noticed that the sermons have been heavy. Okay? When I'm preaching sin, it has to be heavy. I have to be serious about it. And we're, we're the ones that are here. I mean, it would be good to preach these messages to all the people out in Festus that are not here today. To preach it to all the sinners. But I'm preaching it to the saints. Saints need to hear it as much as the sinners need to hear it. Because there are things, people, that we're guilty of. Things that we do that are not right. And I can't, as a pastor, I can't, I can't whitewash it. I can't, um, I can't just gloss over it. I can't ignore it. Because God may need that, may He may use that to deal with you about something going on in your life that I don't know about. And so, in preaching these messages, yes, I'm burdened. I'm burdened for our church. I want us to keep going. 
God is using this church. And you have no idea how much and how important it is. A guy came to me, I met him Tuesday night. He was there Tuesday and Wednesday night. And he got to talk to me afterward, and he said, Mike, he said, I just want you to know, he said, me and, and some family members of ours, we started a church nine years ago in Springfield. Eight years ago, we tossed out every version of the Bible except the King James because of you. And I said, well, just, he said, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that it was the Lord, and it was. But he said, God used you to do that. And... You know, I just, heard, I just heard some good things this week from some people. A lot of thankfulness. And I take that all with just a grain of salt. It, I, I, God knows my heart. It doesn't make me think that I'm real, some big something. Because God's already told me years ago, Mike, if you won't let me use you, I'll find somebody else. I'm not the only one in the world who knows how to read and preach the Bible. But God is using us in some really, really good, good ways. And that makes us a target of the enemy. He's going to target this church. He's going to try to get us at each other's throats. He's going to try to bust us up. He's going to try to get us to fail in some way, some fashion, so that we're not doing what we're doing. And he's going to, he's going to use these leverage points of sin in our life to come at us and to get us. He's going to use it to try to get at us as a church. He's going to use it to try to get at us as individuals. He will target me specifically with things that he knows he can use leverage against me. He can target me personally and with the burdens that I carry for my people here. Those burdens to me are real. You're the guys sitting, you're the ones I see in the service. These people out here, I know some of them and I love them. But you're the ones that are here, so naturally you're going to be the ones that I'm burdened for the most. And I care about what happens in you. I care about your life. I care about how things are. And I hate seeing the devil working on you. But I also want to do this with compassion. I want to do it in love. I want to say it in love. And I want you to know that I don't think that I'm standing up here lording over you, that I don't have any of these issues and you do what's wrong with you. I don't want you to think that. But God dealt with me this week. He really did, because I was pretty low. You didn't know it. You didn't know how low I was. But I was pretty low. And uh, God dealt with me this week in talking to Pastor John. And uh, I just want you to know that I think, I still think, this is the best church I've ever been a part of in my whole life. I don't want anything else. I'm staying here. I'm not leaving, not going anywhere. I'm going to keep preaching this, but I'm going to keep being burdened over it and wait for God to move in your life. And I'm satisfied with that. I am. I'm, I understand that you can't change anything about you, and I can't change you. We have to wait on the Lord to change one another. Is that not true? Okay. I've learned this in my marriage. If there's something about my wife I'm not real happy about, she's the last one in the world I'm going to tell. The first one I'm going to tell is the Lord. And that way God either changes her or God changes me. Either way, then we're going to be happy with one another. And I see this church as like my wife. My love for this church has to be unconditional. And I'm going to love you no matter what. Always. Amen? So now I'm going to preach on hate. Okay? Galatians 5, are you there? And then, now I want to say this too, because I don't, I don't want to leave anybody out. You folks online. We know and understand here that were it not for the volume of people that are with us each and every service and your support here is the reason why we can run two radio stations, 
We can do the work in Kenya. We can keep pouring out DVDs all over the world. And it's because God has blessed this work through you guys. Because this church here financially couldn't do what we're doing. And I don't want to say we're just using, we just need your money, just keep your mouth shut. I don't want to say that. We love you, and I want to tell you that if you have never been here, come one weekend. Stay, get to know us, fellowship with us. That way, you're a face with us. You get to see something besides the back of everybody's heads, okay? And I want to encourage you to try to come and visit and stay here and, and let us get to know you and you get to know us and to see this place because it's, 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 Aaron, is it not neat? Okay, God blew her in on a sail a couple weekends ago and she's just, she's just ecstatic that she gets to be here with us, okay? And we love her. We just, we just fell in love with her. Okay, so we love you. Turn around, everybody look at the camera. We love you. Amen. Amen. Good grief. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. Ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh these are, and notice the Spirit there is capital S. I just now paid attention to that. He's talking about the Holy Spirit in you. Because you can't do it by yourself. Got to be the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, and uncleanness, lasciviousness. That was one sermon. Idolatry, that was two sermons. Witchcraft, that was uh, last Sunday. Witchcraft and rebellion. Today is hatred in all of its ugly forms. Hatred. Variance. And I've already, no it's not, let's see, I've, I've already started work. I was doing a study on hatred and end up already making notes on envying. Because they're related. Who you envy, you'll hate. Who you envy, you'll hate them because you'll want what they have and you're not getting it and you're going to despise them because they have it. So hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness. I've already started working on murders. Hatred is murder. Drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now look at your Bible, look at verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is, what's the first thing? The opposite of love is hatred. The opposite of hatred is love. See how profound that is? All right, let's be dismissed in prayer, that's it. If you get that, you'll get it. But let's look at hate, hatred in all of its ugly forms, because it's very ugly. Heavenly Father, I always need your help to preach. I can't do it without it. God, humble me. Humble me. Father, I need this message. I need it as much as anybody here. I need this message. Because God, I am struggling. You know, God, I am struggling with hatred. And I don't like it. I don't like it in me. I can't just make it go away by having positive thoughts because I just don't have positive thoughts. God, you're the only one that can change that. And I'm asking you, God, to do that because I don't have the ability to do it on my own. So, God, I, I want you to let these people know God, that I'm not preaching down at anybody. Because I need this. I needed to study it. I needed to work on it. I needed to put it together. And I needed to preach it as if I'm the one listening to it. So, Lord, in this case, I have somebody in mind preaching this message, and it's me. So, God, deal with me today. Deal with anybody else, Lord, that is really struggling right now, hating somebody. 
hating a person, hating a family, hating a group of people. God help us. The devil's tearing this nation apart with hatred. He is, and it's working. And there's hatred on both sides, everywhere. And God have mercy on us. And God teach us how to love people that we don't want to love. Lord, just add your blessings, Lord, to this message, I pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let me run through these passages very quickly. You can turn there, try to keep up with me, but I'm just going to move through the scriptures, all right? Here's the commandment by God, Leviticus 19, 17, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Notice that he said, in thine heart. Because you can, you can be nice to somebody on the outside, but in the inside you hate their guts. And it's just a false, you're giving them a false idea that you really are wanting to be their friend, but the truth of it is you hate their guts, you despise them. So he did not say, you know, thou shalt not hate thy brother on the outside. He said, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Because the heart is where hatred exists. The heart is where hatred lives. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Not allow sin upon him. Don't wish for your neighbor to fall into sin and so that God will kill him for you. I'm, I'm not preaching this to y'all. I'm preaching it to me because I'm struggling with it. Not suffer sin upon him. Don't wish that he falls. Don't wish that he goes to hell. Don't wish that anybody goes to hell. You have no idea what you're saying. You have no idea. Why is it that before God will forgive our sins, we have to forgive others of what they're sinned against us? I mean, who do we, who do we, I'm, I'm going to say this a lot, who do we think we are? Thinking that other people that we're mad at or people we hate, that they deserve to go to hell, but I don't. Jesus made it clear. You cannot have your sins forgiven until you are ready to forgive others. Period. And to do that, you've got to come to a place where you stop hating them. And let's just be honest. I don't think that I'm the only one in this church that is battling hatred towards somebody. I don't think I'm the only one. Unless, of course, I am. Am I the only one that's battling hatred with somebody, mad at somebody and don't want to forgive them? Am I the only one? Matthew 22, verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets now understand something from the bible the ten commandments were part of the old covenant and that was that was and you and i are condemned by it we have it written in our hearts but in the new covenant he's only given us two commandments and both of them say love love the lord your god And then love your neighbor as yourself. It's only two commandments. Only two. And every law that that God gave to Israel hinged around one or both of those. Loving God and then loving your neighbor. So we've only got two commandments and it's not about what we do or don't do. It's about love. And let me just, let me just, again, let me just run through the scriptures. Here's the mark, hatred. Hatred is the mark of one who is lost. Lost people are expected. See, that's what that passage is about in Galatians 5. These are the works of the flesh, and the works of the flesh are manifest. And by the way, your hatred of somebody will come out of you. 
One way or the other, it will come out, will it not? Now, there's different types of hatred. There's long-term hatred. Well, you've been hating somebody for years. There is short-term hatred where you are angry with somebody and a short-term hatred comes out of you where you wish evil upon them. And it's manifest in hateful looks and hateful remarks and hateful deeds. Are you listening to the preacher? Hatred brings about hatefulness. And you ever, haven't you ever said that? Said, what are you so hateful for? And the first thing you say is, I'm not hateful. Titus 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Were disobedient. Were deceived. Were serving divers' lust and pleasures. Were living in malice and envy. Hateful. And hating one another. We were that, Brother George. We used to be that, right? We're saved now. We're not supposed to be that way anymore. Amen. Hateful and hating one another. Hateful, hateful remarks, hateful deeds, hateful looks, hateful thoughts. Again, you can have long-term hate towards somebody, or you can have a short-term hate. Maybe you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Maybe you was trying to get to work, and traffic was a mess, and it just came in, and you, watch this now, you vent your anger out on everybody else. Why do you do that? Why do you do that? Why do you take your anger out on people that you are supposed to love and care about and be nice to? Why do you take your anger at something else out on somebody you're supposed to love that didn't do anything wrong? You see, the Bible makes it clear there's, there's two types of hate. There is hate at people who did something really evil to you. That's understandable. But then the Bible makes it clear that you hate people without a cause. They didn't do anything to you. And yet you're treating them. You're treating them like a dog. Why? What did they do? Why did they have to take your wrath? John 7, 7, The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. So... The mark of somebody that's lost is they hate God and they're, they hate Jesus and they're taking their own sorrows out on God. Have you not done that before too? John 15, 19, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, because, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So again, the world... The, the, we expect lost people. Are you listening? Listen to the preacher. We expect lost people to hate people in this church. Because the world hates you. They don't want you bringing up Jesus. They don't want you bringing up the Bible. They don't want you bringing up the gospel. They do not want that brought up. I mean, I've done funerals where I've preached the gospel and I've had some people say, Pastor, man, we're so glad you said that. And then I got people, I'm supposed to shake hands with everybody as they go by the casket. They won't even look at me. They won't shake hands. They, won't, they don't want anything to do with me. They are so angry at me because they felt like I was coming down on them. Well, there's a reason why they felt that way. They were under, they were under guilt and they don't like me. So a question that I have is then, if hating people in church is the mark of a lost person, then why do you take out your anger and hatefulness on people in church? John 15, 23, he that hateth me hateth my father also. See, it's a mark of somebody that's lost. 1 John 2, verse 9, He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother 
is in darkness even until now. So, if you hate somebody, or if you act hateful, you're at, you take your hatefulness out on somebody that you're supposed to love, that's the sign of a lost person, not a saved person. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. You know what the light is? It's the Bible. The Bible is the light. You're abiding in the light. You're, being, you're, you're wanting to follow the scriptures. And you know that your hatefulness and your anger taken out on everybody, you know that it's wrong, so you go and get forgiveness or you try to soothe it over, which is good, that's fine, because everybody's going to do it. I've done it. Taking my anger out on people. So 90% of the time, everybody here that sees me every day, they know that if I'm just angry or whatever, I'm going up here to hide so as to not create victims. Give me time to get over it and I'll be fine. I'm just, listen, I'm just as normal as everybody else is. And I can be hateful. I can be mean. I got a guy in me that wants to attack and I don't like letting him out. And uh, there are certain days when it doesn't take much for me to let him out and I don't like, I don't like me then. And I don't want a reputation as a brawler or a hateful man. I don't want that reputation. A good name is rather be chosen than great riches, is it not? So I'd rather have a good name among people and not be taking stuff out on people that I'm supposed to love. I'd rather, I'd rather be known that way. So I try to just hide. And I clam up. And what that means is don't try to get it out of me. Just let me deal with it, and it'll go away, because it always does, and then I'm fine. Are you listening to me? I recognize in me a very hateful, violent person. And I work hard to try to keep that guy locked up. So should you. It takes work. It takes prayer. It takes fasting and prayer, it takes Bible reading, whatever. But you abide in the light and you won't be treating people that way. Even though, listen, the Bible does not say, do not ever, thou shalt not be angry. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. You are going to get angry at, th it is part of the vanity of the emotional state that we have at times. It's part of who we are. But it's how you treat people when you're angry that's what gives you the reputation that you've got. First John, did I finish that? He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. You and, you and I know somebody. who It, it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter if it's their husband, their wife, their children, their parents, their friends, their family members, their church members. You and I know somebody that 90% of the time you know they're going to vent themselves out on everybody else and take their anger out and hatefulness out on everybody else. You know somebody like that. I tell you that person, they can come in church and say amen and flop a Bible up and down and pay large sums of money and be all kinds of things in the church and be lost and dying and going to hell. Because they refuse, they refuse because of pride to let their anger go to the cross. They refuse it. 1 John chapter 3, verse 13, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we've passed from death into life because we love the brethren. See, now, now we know the difference between lost and saved. If, you, if you're saved, you love people. You lo Watch this now. You love people who have not done anything to you. Why would you take your hatefulness and your anger out on people that have done nothing to you? Why? 
That's the sign of somebody that's lost. That's a sin. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Make that clear? And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But you know what that anger is? That hatefulness is? Everybody serve me. Everybody do what I say or my wrath will come out. And so everybody deals with you mainly out of fear. Oh, we don't want to trip their trigger. Oh, we don't want to do that. We better do what they say or they'll, oh, they'll blow up on us. I've dealt with people like that before. And all you do, everything you do for them is simply out of fear. You don't do anything for them because you love them. You're just getting out of their way. Right? No murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? That'd be like us telling Stacy and these guys they can't come church here no more. That'd be stupid. Well, you know, they, they make noises and we can't have that in the house of God or, you know, this and that. I don't care. They have as much right to be here as anybody else. God sent those guys here. I preached their funerals. I miss them. And we're supposed to love them. We're supposed to lay down. We're, if, if we see a brother in need and we don't give to that need, what do we do? What, why? You know, you can hate somebody by not loving them. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Anybody knows that, and I love you from somebody that's not followed up with the evidence of that love, that, those words are just in vain. A man that's beaten on his wife all the time and then says, I love you, he's a liar. You telling everybody you love them and then you treating them like dirt, you're a liar. Galatians 5.21, envy is murderers, drunkenness. See, it's, he's relating it to murders. 1 John 4.20, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also. Two commandments. And you can't just, well, I love God, but you can't, not love your neighbor or your brother and still go to heaven. Can't do it, people. Can't do it. Here's the signs of hatred. Now this, this again, is, there's long-term hatred. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this up and I'm going to say it. When God made Adam, in Adam was every race of man. Black, Yellow, red, brown, white. God made Adam out of the dirt, and every race is dirty. There is not a single race in this world that is superior simply because of their skin color. And I want to tell you something. The devil is fixing to break this country apart on racial hatred. Not just from the whites either. It's just as bad from the blacks, the browns, the yellows. This is a divided nation and our leaders are to blame for that. Because I got it in my mind that most of us just want to get along. Now, we may not like to eat the same things they like to eat. We may not like to li listen to the same music they like to listen to. 
And we made, you know, I, I'm not saying that we all ought to just join a little commune and all of us get, to, get along together because there are differences in what we like and what we don't like. They're different. When I go to Kenya, those people worship a different way than we worship here. I ain't got it in me to do this. I mean, me and Mike Hutzel and Brent Hutzel, we was over there in Kilimanjaro, Kenya, and we was all standing there looking like Secret Service agents while they were in there just dancing. <laughs> and we try to clap, you know, every now and then on... <laughs> like that, you know. It just ain't there. But I tell you what, those people were praising God. I, had n I did not have a problem in the world with what they were doing. See, I, I just, I do. I got it in my mind, most of us want to get along. But the race baiters are everywhere. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. So there's long-term hatred. You hate black people or you hate white people. Let me tell you something. I did not enslave anybody. I did not enslave anybody. I do not owe anybody tax money because I didn't enslave them. What happened 200 years ago, 150 years ago, I had no part in that. Matthew dug up in, in our ancestry, one of my ancestors owned slaves. I didn't. And I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm sick of this stuff. Let's have people who are black, brown, yellow, white, come to church in the same place together. So here are the signs of hate. Now, again, that's long-term hatred. But short-term hatred is you being hateful without a cause to anybody. Okay? So, Job 16, 9, He teareth me in his wrath who hateth me. Long-term, short-term. Your wrath is poured out on people who don't deserve it. He gnasheth upon me with his teeth. Hateful things that you say to people. Why? Because you want them to be punished. You want to punish them. You want to tear into them. And they didn't do anything wrong. You are hating them without a cause. Mine enemy sharpeneth his eyes upon me. You've gotten those stares, haven't you? You've gotten those looks, or you have given those looks. Proverbs 26, 28, a lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it. So when you hate somebody, you don't have a problem in the world telling a lie about them. Long term, short term. You tell a lie about them because you want them damaged by that lie. You want to defame them. You want to tear them down by what you said. And they did nothing wrong. That's hatefulness. Genesis 37, 4. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto them. That goes to envy. I've got that in my envy list. Being envious that somebody gets something that you don't get. And you hate them for what reason? When his father loved Joseph and put that coat of many colors, what, was, what did Joseph do wrong? Nothing. If they were going to be mad at anybody, they should have been mad at daddy. But they weren't. They took it out on Joseph. And that's what we do. We get envious that somebody got something that we didn't get, and we're supposed to be adults now, right? And we're mad at somebody for getting something and envious against them, and now you hate them. And then look what they did in verse 18. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. See, that Bible's right. When it said hatefulness is murder, it is. Because they hated their own brother so bad, they thought, let's kill him. And then let's tear his coat off of him and put animal blood on it. We'll bring it back to dad and say, oh, dad, look, a terrible beast got him. And you know what? That's what they did. 
And their daddy sat for 22 years and mourned the death of his son, thinking that an animal slayed him. When the truth of it was, it was his own brethren. And Joseph did nothing wrong to deserve that. And you took your wrath, your hateful wrath, out on somebody that did nothing wrong to you. Genesis 15, when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. Did you catch that? When you hate somebody, you think that they ought to be punished for everything that they do wrong. Let me say that again. The sign of hatred of somebody is you think that they ought to get punished for everything they do wrong. Now, let me ask you a question. Does God punish you for everything you do wrong? God forbears and long suffers with you, does he not? Does God, do I, Alicia, did I spank you girls and Matthew and Caleb for every little thing you did wrong? That is terrible parenting. That is lousy parenting. That teaches them that they're never going to be good enough to be loved. Punishing them is one thing, but long-suffering with a child, that goes a long way with them. The Bible tells us dads to not provoke our children to wrath. God treats me the same way. God does not get me for every little sin I commit. He long suffers with me. He knows me. He knows that, that all that God's got to do is say, Mike, remember that? Yeah, you need to repent of that. And I'm on it. You know why? Because I love my father. And all he's got to do is talk to me, and I'm sorry for what I did. But for you to think that everybody ought to be punished, they, everybody should always get what they deserve all the time. Well, serves them right. Serves them right. They should get what they deserve. You don't. That's hatred. Even if it's temporary, it's hatred. And it's wrong wrong. Set Chronicles 18, 6. Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me. Now, getting back to what I said earlier. I feel like I have to preach things like this. I feel like I have to, because we need it. Roy knows that when I get to the part about drunkenness, I'm going to be using him for an example. Roy knows that there are days when he would give his right arm for a drink of whiskey. And he needs... A church that'll love him, that'll support him, that'll help keep him out of the gutter, and that'll set him straight from time to time. And that's Roy's sin. And the same thing goes with yours. You already know that I'm real, I'm real edgy when it comes to stuff like this because I can get my feelings hurt pretty easy. And if you left here because I was preaching this stuff, that hurt me. But don't hate me because I have to preach stuff from time to time. Don't be mad at me. I have to say, I'm just the messenger. Uh, my wife saw this, and I watched it last night. There was a cop that had what they thought was a, a driver under the influence but they weren't sure, and he was involved in an accident. The hospital had him, he was, he was unconscious, and the person that he wrecked his car into, they were in critical condition. The cop 
went after a nurse and said, I want a, I want a blood draw on him. And she said, I can't. He said, why not? And she pulled out the, the hospital's policy and said, here's the three conditions upon which you and our hospital agreed that we would give a blood draw on, and none of these have been met. He said, if, and she got on the phone with the administrator, and she said, here, the administrator wants to talk to you, and he said, I'm not talking to them. You're the one I'm going to take to jail. And he arrested that woman and took her to jail because she would not blood draw that patient when in, in right... She had, that cop had no right, no legal right to get a blood draw from that guy. She was only doing what she was told to do. And the cop arrested the messenger. Now she's got a lawsuit and she's going to win. This, you're talking, this lady's going to be a multi-millionaire here in a few years. Don't take it out on the messenger if you don't like the message. Because I'm doing everything I can to let you know I love you and I'm dealing with me too. I won't hate you if you don't immediately respond to what I preach. But don't hate me because I preach the word. Here's another sign of hatred. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred whereth he hated her was greater than the love whereth he loved it. You know what that is, don't you? Amnon was lusting after his own teenage sister. And him and his buddy finally worked it out where he acted like he was sick. So she, she, he had him bring her, you know, chicken soup and all that stuff. And she brought him food in there and he grabbed her and raped her. And as soon as he got done, he hated her. You know what that is? You'll use people like you love them, but you don't really love them. You don't have a problem in the world using and abusing people that you hate. Am I right? That's not the sign of somebody that loves you. That's the sign of somebody that hates you. So when they tell you I love you, they're just lying. They'll love you as long as you give them what they want. Young ladies, young boys, learn that lesson before you get married. Find you a wife or a, or a husband that will love you unconditionally, not just because you can satisfy them for a little while. Because when that romance dies out, there's got to be something else that they're going to love you for or they're going to be out looking for somebody else. And that's how it is to nowadays. Signs of hatred. Psalm 913, have mercy upon me, O Lord, consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. You don't mind getting people in trouble. Psalm 25, 19, consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. You'll be cruel to people that you don't love. You'll be cruel to people that you do not love. So that means if you're cruel to somebody that you are supposed to love, what that means is you don't love them. Psalm 35, 19, let them not that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Again, that's you. When somebody else falls and gets trouble, you stand there laughing. Ha! You had it coming, didn't you? You got what you deserved, didn't you? Ha, 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 ha! You hateful thing. Psalm 41, 7. All that hate me whisper. Right? They whisper. Hey, so-and-so. Did you hear what so-and-so did? Did you hear what so-and-so got? So-and-so did this. So-and-so did that. You hateful thing, you. Sit and whisper. Backbite people behind their back. Thou, Psalm 44, 10. Thou makest us turn back from the enemy, and they which hate us spoil for themselves. You don't mind taking stuff of theirs either. That, by the way, that's what all that reparations is about. Reparations is not about punishing white Americans for enslaving black people, it's about giving them a lot of money. That's what that is. Because the only reparations that should be allowed is the people who actually pulled people into slavery, they should, be, they should have paid the debts that they owed for the labor that they caused those people to do. But we're 150 years past that. All those people are dead. Reparations is not about giving them back anything. It's about taking what doesn't belong to them. That's hatefulness. Man, I got to move on. 
Psalm 55, 3, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me and wrath that they hate me. Oppression. You press down on them. You, you give them a hard time. You give them grief all the time just to be doing it. You cast iniquity upon them. You hope they fall into some sin. You want to try to get them caught in some sin. You want to set them up to fall into sin. You don't have a clue how God's dealing with me. Psalm 69, 4, They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head, that they would destroy me, being mine enemies, wrongfully. See, there it is right there. I mean, I understand hating somebody that did you evil. I get it. That kind of hatred is hard to carry, and at some point, you're going to have to let it go. Now, that doesn't mean that you two can fellowship. It does not mean that. But you can let it go and not carry the bondage of hatred the rest of your life, because it's, it's heavier than a cross. A cross is easier to carry than hatred. That's long-term hatred. Short-term hatred is hatefulness to people who didn't do you any harm, and yet you yelled at them, you took out your wrath, your anger against them, they had to carry your hatefulness and spitefulness simply because you loved them unconditionally. But they took it out on you, and you didn't do anything wrong. That's hatred. Keep doing it. And maybe, maybe you're not walking in the light the way you thought you were. Oh, he that spareth his rod hateth his son. Moms and uh, uh, parents and grandparents. Grandparents can spank too. Listen to my sister back there. Amen. Oh, my Mimo got mad at me one time. It's the only time my Mimo ever wanted to spank my britches. And she was so, and I didn't, I really didn't do anything wrong, but she thought I did. But I guess I had it coming anyway. Courtney, Alicia, Lindsay, Matthew's not here, Caleb, I love you. Because I had to take a belt to you. I had to. Because I love you. God's taken one to me many times. <laughs> Hear the word of the Lord, ye that trembled at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake. Let the Lord be glorified. You hate it and you say, get out, get away from me. I don't want to see you right now. Why? What did they do to you that you, put, you took that out on them? You cast them out of your presence, and what did they do to you? They were just there. You were mad at something else, and you took it out on them. You cast them out of your presence. And they didn't do anything wrong. You hateful thing, you. God, can I quit now? Hatred of others shows self-exaltation. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found hateful. Psalm 55, 12. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. See, that's why whites hate blacks. Whites are better than blacks. Of course we hate them. And that what whites, white people don't hate black people because whites think that they're worse than black people. The people who think they're better than black people, that's why they hate them. Whites are superior to blacks. And then you got then you got everybody else. Blacks are superior to browns and whites and yellows and it's everybody hating everybody. And for what reason? We were born with a skin. We were born with a color. So what? How dare you exalt yourself above another race or another group of people? You're not better than them. You're made out of the same dirt and you're a sorry low down sinner. You deserve hell.
Fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, tonight, I want to follow up this message with the opposite. So come to, and listen, I, this is hard, so come tonight and get it easy. Okay? Please. Please come to church tonight, 4 o'clock. Because then I'll give you the good side. I'll teach you about love. I'll teach you about how, how much joy there is in love. I told Lisa while we was gone, I miss my grandbabies. I get so much joy out of having my children and my grandchildren around me. I love them so much. I have so much joy being with my church people. I miss you guys when I'm gone. You guys give me so much joy and cause me so much grief. But I love you. And I'm telling you, Loving people is just a lot better than hating. And tr treating people like you love them is a lot better than treating them like you hate them. Even though you say, no, I really love them, then why do you take out the stuff on them that you do? It's not right. Maybe we have some repenting to do. So maybe I'll say, if you want to, let's come and pray about being hateful. And see, that's not like saying, well, I committed adultery and I'm going to come down and tell everybody I was committing adultery. This is a little bit easier to deal with but it's still sin. Amen? It's still sin. So we need to pray and we need to repent. Father, I love you and I love my wife. I love my children, I love my grandchildren, and I love these people. God, you know how much I love these people. And God, you deal with me all the time about not being right with my wife. You deal with me all the time about not being right with my children, not being right with my grandchildren. And God, you deal with me all the time about not being right with my church. And I haven't been. And God, I confess to you that I've taken my anger out on people that didn't deserve it. And God, I'm so sorry for that. I'm so sorry. I, I love these people. I love the people in my family. I love the people in this church. And God, I don't, I don't want any harm to come to them. So God, may you forgive me and may they forgive me. And God, I confess to you today that I'm very, very bitter about some people that have done me wrong. Very bitter. And I've been carrying that bitterness for a long time now. And I don't want to. And I need help. I need a counselor named Jesus to counsel me. I need a friend named Jesus to comfort me. I need a father in heaven who will chastise me. For my benefit, because he loves me. And I need this church. I need my wife. I need my family. I need my, all of my friends. I need them in my life. So, Father, help me, God. 
to not carry out my anger on people who don't deserve it. God, help me to not carry out my anger thoughts on people that I think do deserve it. And God, just help me to love them. I'm struggling with it. But God, please help me to love them. Even if we can't fellowship from here on out, help me to love them. Because that's a lot easier to bear. Father, forgive me and have mercy on me. And Father, forgive my church and have mercy on each one of us that are guilty of taking our anger and our wrath out on people, especially if they didn't deserve it. Father, Lord, teach us to love unconditionally the way you love the world. You died for the whole world. You died for every worthless. You died for billions and billions of people that are now eventually in hell or going to hell. They have no intention of getting saved. They have no intention of loving you back, but you loved them so much you gave your son for them unconditionally. God, that's hard. That's hard for me to do. So I need the Spirit to manifest that fruit in my life. I want to be known that I love people and not known any other way. So, Father, help me and help my body, this church, and bless us and forgive us. We love you. Help us to love one another. We thank you, God, for loving us and for putting up with us. Father, we ask, God, that you'll help us do the same. We ask this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.